Okay, I'm here talking to uh, the mysterious uh, Brian Martin of Attrition, and uh, he's going to be speaking today over at uh, Black Cat. We're here at B-Sides right now, but uh, what are you going to talk to him uh, about over there? So, Steve Christie from uh, CVE and myself, I'm the content manager of OSVDB. We're going to talk about how vulnerability statistics all suck how they have always sucked and they probably always will. What we'll do is we'll talk about um, how to identify bad stats, how to debunk them, how to identify goodish stats because they, some of them can be decent uh, as long as they're disclaimed and people understand the data sources they're working with. And then moving forward, how we can start to combat uh, the wave of bad stats that we've had. So, okay, uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, are in security, they don't work in vulnerability management. They might not understand, first of all, uh, what the stats are that you're talking about. Can you explain a little bit? Sure. So, one of the stats that we frequently see is there were uh, 5,000 vulnerabilities disclosed in th 2012. And if you do that year after year, then people start making uh, these wild assumptions that, oh, well, if there was 6,000 the year before and only 4,000 this year, things are getting better. You would assume that, 6,000, 5,000, 4,000, things are obviously getting better. No, not at all. That's a factor that the VDBs, the vulnerability databases, aren't necessarily tracking all the vulnerabilities that have been disclosed. And there's a wide variety of bi uh, bias that will slip in and cause those numbers to be uh, varying year to year. And each year it may be a combination of different kinds of bias, whether it's the VDB, whether it's the vendor, the researcher. Uh, there's just way too many things that factor into this and influence them. Okay, and so uh, uh, when, you, when you say, you know, basically the, the vulnerability scoring right now, or the stats, is, is bunk, um, what are we missing? The main thing we're missing is that no one has a good data set. We're all operating off of very flawed, very incomplete data sets. So if you have, and just you know, making up a number, if you have 50% of the vulnerabilities that were disclosed and you're doing statistics based off that, then all of your stats are going to be wildly inaccurate. And we all we know is that they are inaccurate. We don't necessarily know how bad they are or in which areas they were influenced the most. Well, that, that, that would be my next question then is, uh, okay, so what's what's the solution? Is it just that we would need to recognize that we're working with faulty data and kind of uh, uh, kind of like, uh, you know, Schlodinger's cat, you know, Absolutely. cat's half dead and we've just got to kind of uh, move from there or is there a, a better alternative to the way we're doing things? Here's a couple things. Number one, the people that are working with this data, most of them don't work on a VDB day to day. All they're doing is they're downloading a data set and they're like, well, I can parse this and I can make some conclusions. First, they need to understand the data set, how it was generated, what the process is, what are the criteria for inclusion, and what we call abstraction bias. So one CVE, a common vulnerability uh, enumeration identifier, may be issued for a set of vulnerabilities. In reality, that one CVE may cover 10 distinct vulnerabilities. So if your analysis is based on counting CVEs, then right now you're talking about a CVE, not a vulnerability. They are very different. That's one of the most common mistakes people make, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, so uh, uh, in your talk, are you going to be proposing some solutions? Uh, are you going to do you have some suggestions for people who work with uh, uh, vulnerability uh, statistics regularly? So yeah, we will be making uh, both suggestions and recommendations for how to properly understand the data. The biggest thing, how to disclaim the data, what caveats you need to give, um, you know, basically briefly explain your own bias, briefly explain the VDB's bias. And when you make those uh, statements, then any subsequent analysis or conclusions start to have a little more meaning. Excellent. Well, Brian, thanks for taking the time out. Uh, I know we're both going to go over and uh, catch Alex Hutton's talk, and then you'll be rushing back over to Black Cat. Uh, good luck with your uh, uh, session today, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Great. Appreciate it.